do you at all use that as a fire for this game? Uh, I mean, obviously, when you lose to a team, you're going to want to beat them the next time that you you play them. But, uh, I mean, I remember being on the sideline and, and having full confidence that our defense was going to make the stop. And they, they got really close to us several times on that drive. And so, I mean, you never feel like you're – that you never had that defeated – Feel until after the game is over, I guess you would say. I mean, we I had the utmost confidence that defense was going to get that stop in, the, in that possession, and uh, we just camped a little short. Patrick, it seemed like you were on the move quite a bit on Sunday. How much of that was by design versus you on your own, kind of, kind of moving out of the pocket? Yeah, I think it was a, a mixture of both. I mean, every, I feel like we, we had a, a game plan where we felt like we could move the pocket and make stuff happen on the perimeter, and then there was times where I, where I kind of scrambled and tried to make stuff happen as well. But, uh, I mean, it, it just kind of goes with the game plan and, and how we feel that we can uh, attack opposing defenses. Since returning to the lineup, how comfortable do you feel stepping up and with the pocket? I know, obviously, probably a little bit of an adjustment. Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel confident. I mean, we've kind of gotten our, our, our whole O-line group back now, and so I feel like I've gotten – better and better at stepping up. I think as seasons go on, uh, I kind of mentioned it during the bye week, I feel like there's sometimes I drift back and I just have to keep working on keeping hitching and hitching in the pocket whenever I, I have a clean pocket so I can make those throws downfield. What That's is your takeaway from watching uh, Lamar Jackson as well, Deshaun Watson, and the success that they had against the Patriots this season? Yeah, I mean, obviously when you, you see teams that are able to move the ball and score points against a defense of this caliber, you, you watch and see what the, what are the things that they did. And I think the biggest thing was whenever they had their opportunities, they hit them. And I think that that's a big thing is that they're not going to give us a lot of opportunities. I mean, they're, they're a very good defense and very sound with what they do. And so it's about taking what's there. And then whenever you get the big shot, the big play, then make sure you hit that and, uh, and score touchdowns when you do. Patrick, you know Derek Dieter's one of your best buds. How's that going to be with him not on the practice squad this week? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's different. I mean, it's a business. You understand kind of how the, the game and how the NFL works. Uh, obviously, he's a, he's a good friend of mine. But, uh, I mean, it's, you kind of have to just keep rolling with a big week ahead of us. Patrick, how good is it to have Spencer back on the squad? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 really good to have someone that can come in with familiar, familiarity with the offense and, uh, and uh, someone that you know can go out there and, and run and get the tough yards and also catch the ball coming out of the backfield. And you don't, you don't have to worry about – him having to figure out protections because he's been in this offense and understands, and he's played against his team, and he understands how to kind of help you out in the in the backfield protection wise as well. In terms of protections, Patrick, I know last year playing the, the Patriots twice, they did a lot of different things at both games. Just how much of that experience will help you and the offensive line understand what you may see, given how different they sort of play week to week. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely – it's helped me out even to this season in general, the way they, they've presented different things that maybe were, we didn't expect or that they kind of did that were unscouted looks and being able to adjust on the fly. I mean, it's, it's a team that they're going to have stuff that, they, that we necessarily didn't prepare for because they're going to do stuff that they haven't done maybe in, a, in two or three years. And so we, we've watched the tape. We've went back and tried to look at everything that they could possibly do. But whenever we get these unscouted looks, it's about me finding the best way to get us into the best play and not take these negative plays and still keep the offense moving. Can, can you explain whether it was back in October last year or even in the AFC Championship game, what that feeling is like as a quarterback when – you know it's a good defense and you see something that, oh, I haven't seen yet. What, what's that feeling like for you as you're trying to get the snap off but also get the team in the right position? Yeah, I mean, you just have to try to quiet your mind, I think, is the biggest thing. I mean, you, you have to understand that you can't be perfect every single time, even though you want to be. Uh, and you have to just find ways to get the ball out of your hand. I mean, the good thing about this team is we have so many playmakers that I don't have to be perfect every single time. I can just get the ball to guys like Tyreek or Kelsey or Sammy or all these guys and that they can make plays happen. And so that's something that I think I learned uh, after the first time I played these guys where I was maybe holding the ball uh, a little bit too uh, too long, and I try to adjust to that when I, we play them in the playoffs. And whenever we play them this year, I'll try to do the same things. Pat, one thing you've tapped into, I think especially this year, has been the uh, free plays. Just what's been key with the cadence and how do you think you've been accomplishing that so frequently? Yeah, I think it's just kind of trying to catch the teams off guard. I mean, we, we try to change the cadence and do different things as as much as possible so teams can get the, the jump off the ball that, that they want. But uh, uh, just trying to find ways to just find any advantage that you can to, to get get yards. And in, in this league, those little things can be huge at the end of the games. To build off of what Nate asked about the, um, the, the different defenses that maybe you're going to see something you haven't seen, does that change your film work at all? I mean, just because you might – 
not it might not appear in film so what's the point or do, do you go back even further years than you might on a normal team yeah i think we we all we always kind of go back and see how they've played us in especially teams that we've played a, a lot of times to a few years back and stuff like that but uh i think the the biggest thing that i learned uh i think the difference between the first time i played these guys and the second time is to not get rattled just to kind of kind of see what it is understand that it might be an unscouted look and just find the best ways to get us into the best way that i think that we can get positive yards on how much time did you spend watching that AFC Championship game from last year? Uh, I mean, obviously, I watched it right after we played them, just to kind of see what. See what. I mean, even though we we didn't have another game, I wanted to still learn from that game and get as get as much as I can going into the off season. And then I watched it again uh, this year. So I mean, this week I meant. So it was uh, just kind of those those two times. And then, I mean, obviously, we have them in cut ups and stuff like that when we're looking at certain plays or certain breakdowns. But uh, as far as through and through, I think just those two times. You mentioned Tyreek. He had a really big game, a regular season game up there, and they did a really <coughs> nice job against him last time. That's what they're good at, yep. finding something and taking it away. I mean, what's that chess game like during the week to get yourself ready to make sure that you can get your best players in position where they can't take it away? Yeah, you have to, you have to prepare for whatever they're going to do. If that's going to be doubling Tyree, doubling Kelsey, doubling Sam, or whatever it is, we just have to prepare ourselves to be able to move those guys around and, and, get, them, and get them open in the best way that we think possible. Uh, but uh, I think the the biggest thing is just taking what's there, and uh, I mean, if you watch the Texans game, I mean, they were doubling Hopkins a lot, and they were doing stuff to take away him, and he, and Deshaun hit Kenny Stills or Will Fuller, and I mean, you just have to take what's there whenever whenever it comes down to it. Obviously, we want to get Tyreek the ball in any way possible, but uh, uh, whenever they do do whatever they can to take him away, it's about these other guys stepping up and making plays. Yeah, what, what influence has uh, Eric Bieniemy had on this offense and, and on you the last couple of years? Yeah, I think the the details and the way he's able to kind of control the room and, and get the best out of every single player is, is a big thing. I mean, he's, he, he holds you to a high standard. He holds you to the standard that you, you need to be perfect with every single rep that you get in practice. And I think that, that details and that, that standard that he holds everybody to elevates everyone's game. A couple more guys. Nationally, I think people talk about every year, this could be the last year of Tom Brady. Is that something that maybe the competitiveness in you thinks about? This could be my last crack at getting a W over who's the greatest quarterback of all time? Yeah, I mean, I've known for a while that it's not going to be the last year anytime soon. I mean, he's still playing at a, a high level, and the, I mean, in, unless he just doesn't want to play, which I don't see. I mean, I, I guess I expect to see him for a, uh, at least a couple more years. And I mean, whenever you play play a guy uh, like this who's who's won all these these championships, you want to go out there and give your best effort, of call, obviously, and you want to try to find a way to win. But uh, at the same time, it's a team it's a team game, and we're going to go out there and just try to do whatever we can to come out with the win. Patrick, you've faced a lot of elite defensive players so far this season. Just Gilmore, just what stands out about his game and what he's able to do inside their defensive scheme? Yeah, I think I think the understanding that he has, uh, I mean, of, of the defense is what's the biggest thing for me. I mean, he really understands what the offenses are trying to do, and he tries to take that away, and he understands what's going on not only with his guy but with the, the, the pass rush or the other guys around him. And I think that's that's the biggest thing that's ha had him have this such a great, great season this year and last year. And, I mean, he's obviously – physically gifted the way he's able to play man coverage, zone coverage, or whatever it is, but he understands the whole concept of the defense and he understands what the offense is trying to do to exploit it. That's okay. Cause for cleats. Yours aren't in there in the other room, mm -hmm. so can you tell us a little bit about how important it is for you and what are yours going to look like? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a surprise, but uh, it's going to go with the, the, the foundations that I kind of wear with my wristbands and, and my foundation as well and try to, to help them out as best as possible. But, I mean, it, it'll be a surprise on what the colors will be. Uh, I will wear them probably the Denver game. But, uh, yeah, hopefully we get those in soon. Okay, thanks.